Hello and welcome to another of my videos. This is a kind of new series, The Spin Doctor Send, which is where I'm going to be showing card making and so on tips. Slightly odd, odd setup today. I've had to put the tripod above the desk so that I can do an above video. I don't usually do these and I'd like really in future to be doing them with the paper up about here, but uh, my box easel that I usually use to raise things so you can see them doesn't fit. Really quick tip today, it's called making a circus background using some pretty basic supplies that many of you will already have. This is the Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous um, Harlequin stencil, which I will link to in the video description for UK and US purchase. It's pretty economical. And I'm going to stick it down with some blue tape just to hold it in place. Cheap, cheap, cheap blue uh, masking tape because it doesn't tear one's paper. Now I'm not working on Nina, so Nina Solar White Classic Crest as many of the card makers out there will swear by. I am using something cheap I picked up in the UK at the big box craft store which I think is a, I mean it's a premium card stock but I think I got 200 sheets for £10, something like that. I'll try and link to something halfway decent in the video description and let me just get this into position. So I'm going to use a Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Candied Apple which was I think the December release last year when they did that year where you could get different ones each month with the blending tool with a foam thingy on the end and these are the mini ink blending foams from Ranger. If you don't have this blending tool and you think they look expensive and you want one yourself, go to Lindsay the Frugal, Craft, Frugal Crafter's channel as she has a cheap version you can make using makeup sponges and bottle caps, which is actually really good. And I'll try and link to that if I can in the iCard. Just going to go over this. I'm not doing it particularly carefully, but I am going in one direction, just up and down, and I'm going to exhaust the ink and then go back over it. Now this is for a panel for the front of a card, which I'm not actually going to make the card today at all actually. I'm actually doing this for a card I want to make in January for a friend's birthday and this friend has had a lot of ups and downs lately and I wanted to kind of do something to the tune of now you've left the circus and um, life's going to return to normal. So I'm going up and down because that gives a kind of brushed effect, um, does ruin the foam eventually doing that. So nice and straightforward and that was just done with candied apple. Now what you're going to need is a baby wipe and you're going to need to remove the stencil from the paper. Now I went over the edge of the stencil there, which is not the world's biggest problem. I'm going to pop that to one side because it is going to need to dry very slightly and there's a previous version showing what this is going to look like. And I'm now going to clean off this and if you have an art journal or similar, you can put this on a piece of paper in your art journal and clean it off with a baby wipe like I am now and it will give you a page of a really faint background. But um, my art journal's somewhere over there. And I can't really be bothered. I've only just started art journaling and it's all because of the amazing Vicky Papioanu in Greece who has this most fantastic channel and she does really lovely art journaling and I just got so inspired by her I went out and bought a Moleskine um, notepad and stuck all the pages together in pairs <laughs> very ambitiously that I'm going to use it as an art journal and I did about started about three backgrounds um, and yeah, I got bored very quickly because there's no instant gratification because you have to wait for it all to dry. So I can see why a lot of art journalers um, use two simultaneous art journals for that reason. So there's always one that they're working on and one that's kind of got backgrounds drying. So I have caught some bits of baby wipe on the spiky bits of this stencil. I've just removed them and I've just gone over it with a... I shouldn't call it this, but I call it a dead baby wipe because... You know when you leave a baby wipe and it dries out? That is a dead baby wipe. Not a dead baby wipe. It's a baby wipe that is dead, not the other way around, because that sounds horrendous. So, I'm going to go back here now, and I'm going to put this so that it covers the red. So the stencil is over the red, and we're going to fill in the spaces in between. I have to get this exactly right...
Yeah. When you do this, you kind of want to do it so that you're going to have at the bottom a row of triangles. And then at the top, you'll have a row of white triangles, which will become the other colour. I'm using these colours for a reason in that I saw them online ages ago. And I love, well, I saw this colour combination online ages ago and I managed to replicate it using distress inks. So this is evergreen bow. Sorry, it's a bit shiny. You can't really see that. Evergreen Bow is a lovely colour and I don't see it used very much. Um, so I'm just changing the foam and I store my foams in the base of the mini ones for convenience. This is actually based on the logo of the Broadway revival of the musical Pippin, which used a kind of teal and red circus logo. And I loved it and I've been trying to use something in that combination for ages. Similarly, I'm going to go up and down, up and down, because when you remove it all at the end, it will give it a little bit of dimensionality because your 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 background won't be perfectly flat, neatly inked diamonds. They will have a bit of um, texture on them and that texture will all be going in the same direction. It will look a little bit like they've been painted, which of course is what these backgrounds would have been were they actual circus uh, signage. Uh, do note when you're doing this with some of these stencils, particularly this one, they've got sharp edges and they ruin the foam. So um, if you've just got some of these old foam pads that are coming to the end of their lives, this is a good thing to use them for. There is a little bit of um, foam torn and stuck on this one. I'll just show you how much this has become damaged. So you can see how ripped that is. It doesn't do it any prob real t problems, it doesn't cause you any problems with using it, but just be aware of it. And if any areas look pale, a good motion to use is to just put it on and twist. Putting it on and twisting is a good way to just, dark just darken up some of those areas without tearing the foam. And that just adds a little bit. Now, don't forget to put the lids on your distress inks. I learnt that the hard way. I'm going to remove that again. And what you're going to see is beautiful circus background. Lovely distressed circus background. I think it's lovely. Now if you wanted to, to fill in these areas like here, you could just take a cotton bud dipped in distress ink and fill those gaps. I personally don't want to. This is still wet but I am going to let it dry. And if you wanted it bigger, I mean, obviously, I'm probably going to cut along these edges, but if you did want it larger, all you have to do is add the stencil onto the end and just keep going. You can keep going in all directions with this, and if you turn the stencil every now and again, upside down or right side up, these little distress markings won't all end up in rows, and they won't be really obvious that you've used a stencil or similar to do it. So I'm going to let that dry. Um, just to let you know, while I was doing that, I had a sheet of fun foam, that's what this was, underneath it. That was actually there because I was using it to practice some stamping before, and I just didn't take it off. Um, actually, I think it's really useful to do this on a hard surface. I think it's actually easier on a hard surface. So, um, I would recommend you do it straight on your bench. And I've got here a Ranger Craft sheet, which many people have, and I'll link to that in the description as well. So... This circus background, I'm actually going to dry, and then in a few months' time, when I come to using it, I um, I just thought I'd share it online, actually, because I made it the other day, and I really liked it, and I thought I'd share it with you all, um, how to make a circus background. And you can use any combination of colours, but what I'd recommend is you use some level of complementarity. So I used red and teal because of the Pippin logo, which I can probably link to their website or something in the video description so you can see it. Um, if you wanted to do a more traditional um, Commedia della Arte uh, Harlequin kind of um, pattern, you could look up the colours that were originally used. Even just black and white um, is quite pretty. I chose that combination not just because of the Pippin logo. The other reason is that green and red are complements, and that is a bluish green, okay, but it's really a cyan, I suppose. The real logo is cyan and red, but I couldn't quite match it, so I, I used that combination. But using complements is really very beautiful, so I, I do recommend that. And when you're done, just take your stencils and give them a good clean. 
I'm actually going to use this one to um, do some wet embossing so I want it clean and dry so I'm just going to go over it and then wash it. I find the problem with them is, is that because um, Tim puts these wonderful spiky bits to give us distress patterns, um, they tend to catch baby wipes and cotton wool and they get really annoying. And that, by the way, is the kind of um, ghosting effect you can get if you use it in an art journal just by going over it with a baby wipe. You get that really pale effect, which is now on my fun foam. But if it gets on your fun foam, just wipe it away with a baby wipe, polish it away, and your fun foam will live another day and you can keep using it and it won't stain all your cards. So I won't be using that for some time, but I just thought I'd share that with you so that you could see it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.